Paul from the Maclay Museum talks in this video about appropriate consultation and protocols in relation to the objects in their collection and what approach they take to decide which objects can be displayed publicly. Matt also talks about the important issue of repatriation of human remains. Many Aboriginal human remains have been collected and taken to be studied around the world. Now, the International Council of Museums has deemed it illegal for museums to hold skeletal remains. The University of Sydney has been proactive in undertaking a repatriation process and works closely with communities to return remains. There's some really interesting challenges that come in in relation to protocols of not only displaying physical objects in a museum, but also how do we record and make the information associated with those objects available to people in our databases. Part of the consultation process these days is also to get a general sense of community members about what things are public. A very incredible community member from Yongu country in the north of Australia um, gave us some guidelines a few years ago, which is a really great process. It's called the traffic light system. So we have green, orange and red. And so most of our collections are classified in one of those three categories. Green means it's okay, you know, it's an educational thing. It's, there's no, nothing associated with it, which is too problematic for modern communities. Orange means we definitely need to stop and check with community members about where things are being um, exhibited or how they're being published or who's working with them and give them a say in that. And then there's also the red category, which is secret sacred. Um, and it's items which are in a type of limbo. They probably shouldn't have been collected in the first place, but they're here at the museum now. And most of those things are identified as part of our repatriation project so that future community members can decide whether they get returned, whether they get destroyed even. You know, that's entirely up to communities because there's obviously some things that came into the museum which shouldn't be circulating in modern environments. One of the really fantastic things that consultation has taught us is all sorts of items can have all sorts of protocols attached to them. So it's a really important process in our record keeping to make access tiered to different community members. There's things that we've identified that are really only accessible to men or really only accessible to women or possibly shouldn't be shown to children and different things like that. So it was a very specific period in the late 1800s towards the early to even the mid 20th century, unfortunately, where Aboriginal people's remains were actively sought by collectors and studied um, sometimes with pseudosciences like phrenology, other times with very genuine sciences. There was also people who actively dug up Aboriginal graveyards. Um, they were displayed, sold, traded. Um, no one knows the exact number, but estimates put it at the high thousands, even into the tens of thousands of Aboriginal skeletal remains, which are held in, held in museums and private collections internationally. Ever since the International Council of Museums made it illegal for museums to own somebody else's human remains, something that seems pretty obvious, but um, is something that had to be enacted into law, the University of Sydney took its job very seriously to actively engage with communities and return um, skeletal remains, which were held as part of museum collections. In 1994, there was over 500 sets of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander remains which were identified in the museum's collection. And we have repatriated more than three quarters of those since that time, which is a really interesting process. It's part of the community consultation we do. So um, we inform communities that we're here. Um, we look at the history of the objects, how they were acquired. There's some very unethical grave robbing practices, but there's also a lot came through after floods or bushfires or building of roadworks. Tens of thousands of years of occupation in a lot of sites. It's not surprising that you're going to find Aboriginal human remains buried. One of the other really uh, disappointing things in Australia's history was that prior to 1967, a lot of Aboriginal people weren't allowed to be buried in particular graveyards, in churches or in local council areas and different things. So they had to make do and make their own arrangements on the fringes of the towns and on the edges of missions and reserves where they lived. So as urban centres are expanding and new roadworks projects are happening, it's one of the sad facts of the development in Australia that quite often Aboriginal skeletal remains are found and these days we have much more ethical processes in terms of 
how they're dealt with and how they're treated. It brings up all sorts of interesting questions for us to do. A lot of the time we can't actually rebury the remains where they're found. So we have to talk to national parks and wildlife officers, local councils, and increasingly these days even private landowners are quite happy for Aboriginal community members to approach them and say, these remains were found in the 1930s. They've been in a museum for 70, 80 years. Um, we'd like to rebury them. Is it okay? Where's the safe spot? A very large repatriation happened on the central coast of New South Wales. Because there were so many remains, an entire new cemetery was built with the permission of the local community, and now modern community members are also buried there. So in a lot of ways, we've been able to rectify those mistakes of the past of excluding Aboriginal people and excluding them from the process of owning their own graveyards and be able to use the repatriation project to start a new dialogue and build new spaces, community service sort of spaces, which pe all people need to use and allow Aboriginal people to have greater control over what happens with their remains after they have passed. Wow.